Hello, everyone, and welcome to Decoding Cybersecurity, a conversation with women in cyber. I'm your host, Rena. Today, we're going to be exploring cybersecurity and how we can protect, protect yourself and others while online. Then we'll be speaking with an amazing panel of leaders who are making a difference with cybersecurity. And I'm so excited to be here with you all today. It's going to be a jam-packed hour full of information and great ideas, and I can't wait for you all to meet our guests. So let's get started. Um, most of you are probably familiar with Zoom, but for those of you who are not familiar, here's a couple of things to be aware of. Check out the engagement features that are at the bottom of your screen. You will, while you won't be able to share your webcam or speak with us right now, you can communicate through the question and answer feature. We can use the Q&A to submit questions about the event content or questions for our panelists throughout the panel. We'll try to answer as many questions as possible. At several points throughout the event, you will be prompted with questions about cybersecurity. When they appear, click the answer on the screen to participate and let your voice be known. Finally, should you need it, you can turn on closed captioning by clicking the CC feature and enabling the service. Once again, my name is Rena. I am the Director of Strategic Engagement for the US Department of Homeland Security Office of Legislative Affairs. That's a long way of saying that I work with DHS to connect members of Congress to whatever the department is working on. It's a really fun job. More about me, I'm a fellow Girl Scout. I got my gold award back in 2012, my junior year of high school, which makes me feel a little bit old, but I swear I'm not, um, as a senior scout in girls in Illinois. Shout out to everyone else who's joining us from the Girl Scouts Chicago Council of Greater Chicago and Northwest Indiana. I went to Bryn Mawr College and graduated cum laude with a bachelor's degree in the growth and structure of cities and environmental studies. I started my career working um, in, the US, in the US Senate and the US House of Representatives. Following that, I joined the 2020 Democratic National Convention Committee. Um, following that, I joined the Biden-Harris Coordinated Campaign. And after that, I got to serve on the 59th annual, or sorry, 59th Presidential Inauguration Committee. Today's guest, or sorry, our moderator for today's conversation is the Assistant Secretary for Partnership and Engagement at the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, Ava Malona. Our guests for the con conversation include Jen Miller Osborne, Deputy Director of Threat Intelligence at Palo Alto Networks, Princess Young, a program lead for cybersecurity awareness and training at Southwest Airlines, and Pru Yantarak, a 2020 Gold Award Girl Scout and a first year student, first year student studying computer science at Barnard College. There's a special place in my heart for fellow Gold Award winners who are going to Seven Sisters. So I'm excited to hear from you, Prue. We'll learn more about everyone's experience a bit later during the conversation. We'll also have a few special messages along the way. But before we get into it, let's see where we're all coming from. I'm based in Washington, DC, but our guests are coming from across the country. Miss Malona is also in the DC area. Jen is based in Maryland. Princess is joining us from Texas and Prue is joining us from New York. And here's where you all are coming from. We're so excited to have attendees from 41 different states, plus DC, Puerto Rico, um, and USA Girl Scouts overseas, including Canada, Guatemala, Italy, Kuala Lumpur, and the Philippines. I don't even wanna think about the time difference that you guys are dealing with. So you guys are very committed to cybersecurity and I love that. Now let's find out a little bit more about you. You'll see a survey that popped up on your screen um, asking you to answer about how much you know about cybersecurity, whether you're a newbie to this or if you're consider yourself a pro, we wanna know. Take a minute and let us know. Thanks so much for participating, everyone. Now I'm happy to introduce you to our moderator for today, Assistant Secretary Ava Malona. Ava is a key advisor to the DHS partners, partnerships and outreach efforts. Prior to joining DHS, Ava was president and chief executive officer for over 12 years at the Massachusetts Immigrant and Refugee Advocacy Coalition, MIRA. She is also co-founder of and co-chaired the Massachusetts Business Immigration Coalition in 2018. In 2010, she was co-founder and co-chair for 11 years at the National Partnership for New Americans, a national organization focused on immigrant integration 
at the local, state, and federal levels. Ava also chaired the 2020 U.S. Census Statewide Complete Count Committee in Massachusetts. A native of Albania, Ava practiced civil and criminal law before becoming the youngest district judge ever appointed to Tirana's district court, where she served from 1989 to 1992. After immigrating to the U.S., she directed the refugee resettlement program in central Massachusetts. Today, Ava is recognized both nationally and internationally as an expert and leader on immigration policy and immig immigrants and refugee integration. Ava, I am so humbled to be introducing you today. Welcome. Thank you so much, uh, Rina, for that very generous uh, introduction. It's great to be uh, with you today. The Department of Homeland Security is part of our government. We work very hard to keep our country safe and to strengthen our democracy and protect our democracy. One of the ways we do that is by protecting our country from hackers. The person that leads DHS is Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. While the secretary was unable to attend tonight, he extends his warmest regards and appreciation for your interest in cybersecurity and to all the panelists for participating in tonight's event. He wants to thank all of you for taking steps towards becoming the leaders of tomorrow. He wanted you to know that we need you and your future is bright. And we are so excited to witness the positive impact you will have on the world. Now, Rina, handing it back over to you to take us through the world of cybersecurity. Thanks, Ava. So what exactly is cybersecurity? Let's dig in. Technology and the internet allow us to find information easily and connect with people all over the world, but a lot of you already knew that. People and businesses store a lot of their private information uh, or data on digital devices, so cybersecurity is all about keeping those devices and their data safe. However, cybersecurity is so much more than passwords and usernames. It raises personal, organizational, and natural national threats, as well as many ethical questions. For example, many services need computers to run effectively. If a hacker shuts down a city's computer system, it could cause all sorts of problems. It can stop stoplights, it can prevent fire trucks from getting to where they need to go, it can stop water services, it can interrupt very um, systems running important utilities that might be shut down. So how can something like this happen? How do hackers shut down a computer or a city? For anyone who isn't familiar, ransomware is a type of malicious software or malware that denies the victim access to their data until they pay a ransom. Ransomware attacks can, might target individuals, cities, and organizations such as hospitals, schools, small businesses, and utilities. Unfortunately, the number of these attacks are also on the rise, with victims paying ransomware attackers $350 million alone in 2020. Ransomware attacks can slow and shut down entire networks stealing data like personal and credit card information, social security numbers, trade secrets, corporate information, and software code. Often paying the ransomware appears to be the quickest and cheapest way to restore data. However, cybersecurity experts discourage paying a ransom after an attack. Although governments, businesses, and organizations are often targeted, individuals are also at risk. In some cases, personal attacks can be even more harmful to individuals because many users do not have a safe cybersecurity plan. Solving a cybercrime like a ransomware attack and recovering from its costs both in recovering from it costs both time and money. So it's better to prevent these crimes from happening in the first place by having a strong plan. Raising awareness about safeguarding personal information benefits society by making it harder for hackers to steal information. To increase community awareness of ransomware, Girl Scouts, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, DHS's Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, or CISA, and Cyber.org recently teamed up to launch the Girl Scout 2021 Cyber Awareness Challenge, which closed earlier this week. Over 50 of you completed the challenge, checking in with your own cyber habits and spreading awareness to your communities. So congratulations to all of you. On behalf of all of us, um, about on behalf of all of our teams to congratulate all of you for helping make the cyber world a safer place for all. Now, one of the easiest ways to secure your own data is with a strong password. On your screen, you'll see a poll asking which password is the most secure. Every time you set up an account, you have to create a password and it's just 
Um, and an account is just a way for a website or app you're using to know who you are and the password verifies your identity. And if someone wants to get your, into your account without permission, you, you want your password to be hard for them to guess. So why don't you all answer which password you think is the most secure? All right, most of you voted correctly that option C, bird 972 metal 813 knock is the most is the strongest password. That's because it uses a mix of random words and numbers and a capital letter. letter. So congratulations to all of you who got it correct. Um, a and B both include personal information that could be um, could be found online through many sources, and D uses an ob obvious substitution using the number three instead of the letter E. Any ideas how it can be even stronger? You can add special characters like a hashtag or a dollar sign um, or an exclamation point. So as I mentioned, hackers can use social media sites for password clues like someone's birthday or your pet's name or your high school, um, what year you were born. And unfortunately, there's even programs that can run through everything from dictionaries to books to movie scripts to song lyrics to identify millions of potential passwords in minutes. There's additional programming that can try each of those passwords to get into your account. So to make a really strong password, you need to get pretty creative. The strongest passwords are paraphrases with numbers, special characters, and uppercase letters in unusual places. Hackers launch ransomware attacks and crack passwords. They send fishy emails with suspicious attachments that may even ask for personal information. They can even secretly install software that spies on people or damages their devices. So what can you do to defend yourself? The first step is to think carefully about what you do and who you share information with, both online and offline. Everything you do online, from research to shopping to scrolling social media, leaves a trail of data called your digital footprint. Some programs, like social media, allow you to post and share information, but every program or app you use collects some sort of data about you. Because of this, it's good to think very carefully about what you share online and never accept friend requests from people you don't know. What you do offline also impacts your cybersecurity. Telling a friend your password or losing your driver's license or throwing out an old boarding pass all make your personal information vulnerable. Cybersecurity experts can plan and build security systems for computers and companies to protect information. Um, sorry about that. Cybersecurity experts can plan and build security systems for computers and companies to protect information and computer systems. They may investigate cyber crimes such as stealing private information or shutting down an organization's website or computer network. There's lots of careers in cybersecurity with each job plays an important role in creating a secure computer system. Some are more public facing while others are more behind the scenes. All of them require good problem solving skills and good people skills. Now let's bring back our moderator, Assistant Secretary Ava Malona, who will lead us through today's conversation. Welcome Thank you back, so Ava. much. Thank you so much, um, Rina, and welcome everyone to the conversation. To find out more about cybersecurity, let's bring our special guests. And throughout the discussion, please know that you can send your guests your questions uh, through the Q&A. Yeah. First, we are very excited to have Princess Yang, the program leader for cybersecurity awareness training at Southwest Airlines, joining us today. Princess directs cybersecurity company-wide to 60,000 employees. She loves to educate and empower employees so they can recognize and combat relevant threats facing the organization, regardless of their position or title. Prior to Southwest, she led national security awareness, sorry, uh, cybersecurity awareness efforts at the Department of Homeland Security for about five years. She received the Master's of Business Administration and Insurance from Idaho State University. Welcome, Princess. Thank you, Ava. Great to be here. Next, welcome to Jen Miller Osborne. Jen is the Deputy Director of Threat Intelligence at Palo Alto Networks. For almost 20 years, Jen has worked in cyber threats intelligence and served as a subject matter expert to multiple US federal agencies. 
She has influenced national cybersecurity policies and regularly briefs at all levels of government and the private sector. Jen investigates cyber espionage and cyber crime actors and groups and then shares the threat intelligence. Jen is a veteran of the US Air Force and fluent in Mandarin Chinese. She has a Master of Science degree in Information Technology from University of Maryland. Hi, Jen, we are so fortunate to have you with us. Hello, Our third thank guest, you so much. Our third guest for today is Pru Yanatrak. She is a graduate of La Canada High School in Los Angeles County, where she was the president of the speech and debate team and vice president of her school orchestra. Pru earned her Gold Scout Gold Award in 2020 with the Girl Scout of Greater Los Angeles. Her Gold Award addresses for her community and school. She founded the club at her school entitled Cyber Patriot Club for the purpose of advocating for more girls to join and engage in computer science and cybersecurity. Pru has also competed in national cyber defense competition through the Air Force Association Cyber Patriot Program. She is a first year at Barnard College at Columbia University when she is pursuing her studies in computer science. Welcome, Pru. So nice to have you with us. Thank you, Eva. Looking forward for today. So to get us going, I have a couple of questions for each of our guests. Then we will open it up for um, the guests so all of you can ask um, questions. And remember that you can send our guests your question at any time throughout the discussion through the Q&A. So um, first, let's get to know our guests a bit more. Princess, I will start with you. You don't have what some could call a traditional background uh, for someone working in cybersecurity. Can you tell us more about your career path and what inspired you to move into cyber? Thanks so much, Ava, for this awesome question. So you're right. I actually have my bachelor's degree in business and a minor in music, not cyber, not technology, not computer science at first. The day of graduation, the director of our cybersecurity program at my college came up to me and actually asked if I wanted to come back to college for a full scholarship to graduate school through the scholarship for service program, fully paid. But the catch was the degree was in cybersecurity. I actually ended up being the only female in my program for two years. I was one of the only ones who didn't already have a computer science background. And quite honestly, some days were a little tough. I actually really didn't want to be a coder. I didn't want to be a software engineer. And I wasn't really sure where cyber could take me and if it was the path I actually wanted to go in life. However, it was worth it. Fast forward, I found an area of cybersecurity that focuses on career development, helps people learn about how cool cyber really is, and most importantly, helps educate people on how cyber helps our community no matter where you live. Cyber actually allowed me to use my passions of educating, entertaining, and communicating to help people. So that music minor does come in handy sometimes. I actually find that these unique qualities and this path that I took into cyber, although not traditional, it actually makes me really unique in the field and allows me to use strengths that not everyone else in the field may have. So I hope my story helps anyone listening that they can do cyber. You don't have to take the traditional path. And regardless of whatever job you want in life, there's probably a cyber job for that. Thanks. Thank you so much, uh, Princess. Uh, Jen, um, my question for you is, um, your work in uh, threat intelligence. Uh, so can you share with us what a regular day at work um, for you looks like? Honestly, there is no regular day at work when you do threat research or threat intelligence and cybersecurity because it can change so much day to day and in some cases hour to hour based on 
the actual threat landscape and the attacks that are happening. So, you know, some days I plan to come in, I'm thinking, all right, I'm gonna knock a bunch of tasks out. Nothing big's gonna happen. Something like solar winds is disclosed. <laughs> and uh, my schedule for the next six months is related largely to that and a lot of my team. So especially during this course of the pandemic where the threat landscape has started to change so, so much with the shift to so many people being home, it's, it's a lot of fun. And it's honestly one of the things I love about cybersecurity is the fact that you don't have like a normal day-to-day -day routine that things can change and shift and you have to learn new things and learn new skills to stay abreast of it. But it can also be difficult when you're thinking, all right, I've got a bunch of things on my to-do list today that I need to knock out. And you walk in and you're like, yeah, okay, none of that's happening anymore. So you have to have that same level of ability to be flexible when your entire schedule and your team schedule is upended because you're having to jump on something that is uh, more timely and more relevant. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, Prue, your um, Gold Award project focused on cyber. Can you tell us more about your project and what inspired it? Yes, um, I decided to do my project on cybersecurity because growing up, I had always loved computer science. My elementary school had weekly computer science labs where we learned to code on Scratch, which is a website where you can code whatever you like and make the characters do whatever you desire. And it was my favorite class ever. However, as I went to middle school and high school, I realized that more and more girls were losing interest in computer science. And therefore, I knew right away that I wanted to do my gold award um, to encourage and bring more girls of the middle school and high school levels into computer science. So my gold award called Cyber Defenders had two parts to it. The first part was a club that I had founded at my school. And through this club, I sought out girls, whether or not they were initially interested in computer science. And together we taught ourselves about the ethics of computer science and how to operate different computer systems. And I also organized volunteer training for the national cyber defense competitions for the high school girls at my school to help with the middle schoolers, which leads into the second part of my gold award. So the second part was the facilitation and mentoring of middle school girls in cybersecurity, teaching them things such as how to create a strong password, like we saw a little earlier, um, social media ethics and awareness, firewalls, and even malware. And I absolutely loved working with younger students and encouraging them to learn new things and take on new experiences. And it was such a fun experience. And through the entirety of this project, I came to realize um, the importance of making an impact on my community, but also having fun while doing cybersecurity. I learned so many new organizational leadership and collaboration skills that could be applied to my everyday life. And I hope that I can continue more projects like this Gold Award in the future. That's brilliant. Thank you. Um, Princess, back to you. Can you talk more about your work um, on cybersecurity awareness? I would love to. I love cybersecurity awareness. I love it because it is honestly so accessible to everyone. If you have a smartphone or a smart device, if you save anything in the cloud, you can learn about basic cybersecurity. And I think it really comes back to basic cyber hygiene which was a lot of what Rena was talking about earlier tonight in the program. And it's what a lot of you amazing Girl Scouts who are listening today are doing with your cyber activities today. These are all things that you still need to learn and practice when you're an adult. So for me, in my daily job, I am teaching over 60,000 employees different ways to be cyber secure, sometimes depending on their work role and sometimes even keeping them safe while they're at home. And a lot of my main topics are exactly what we were talking about tonight earlier. Password safety, being careful on social media and what we share online, and how to spot a phishing email. These basic tips are really important because as you get older, you're actually going to have more and more access to sensitive information. So for us at Southwest Airlines, 
That means protecting the information of our customers and our employees. As I said, we have 60,000 employees. And in 2019, pre-pandemic, we transported over 134 million passengers. So that's a lot of information to keep safe. I personally love to keep cyber fun by keeping it simple, keeping it accessible for everybody to enjoy and telling a story. So for example, one of my favorite ways to tell about cybersecurity themes and topics are to compare them to fairy tales. So for example, the tale of the three little pigs. You wanna have a password that is like the pig with the brick house. You want it to have those characters, upper and lower case. You want the numbers. You want all of that that makes it more secure and hard for a hacker to get into. If you keep it too simple, if you have your dog's name in it or the uh, year you were born, that's a little bit weaker, kind of like a house made out of straw. So those are just simple ways that I use to teach everybody and it makes cyber a little more fun. And when cyber is fun, people want to learn more and they want to do the right thing to keep themselves and their families safe. So I love it. That's, that's wonderful, making it fun that everyone can be part of it and, and participate. So that is great. Thank you so much, Princess. Um, I am coming back to you, Jen. Um, you work on cybersecurity and, and organizational and national level. Can you share with us more about how cyber can impact businesses and the wider world? What kind of examples um, have you seen that you can share with us? I think especially over this past year and a half, we've really seen a lot of examples at the news that show just how impactful cybersecurity is. You know, we had the colonial pipeline ransomware attack where we had issues with gas shortages. You know, we had the JBS meatpacker component, which is still causing issues within a lot of supply chains. And we have the increasing results we're seeing globally with a lot of these supply chain attacks where the, we're not able to offload products, not able to have them produced in time because currently the way things were based was it was just in time production. So when you have things where networks go down, they have no tolerance for downtime. A day down, two days down for a single organization in a supply chain, everyone upstream of that, and then everyone downstream of that, it, just ex it goes exponential. And we're really seeing the impact on that with how important good cyber hygiene is, with how important understanding these attacks and good cyber security is because we're increasingly seeing these real world effects on um, everyday people, right? It's not necessarily your giant corporations that are being affected by this. You're seeing that now trickle down even more to your everyday consumers. And those everyday consumers also are increasingly being targeted because we all live online now, right? Like that's just kind of the way it goes. A lot of our components are that way. You know, your fridge needs to be online to function. Your stove needs to be online to function. We have a million different IOT devices and it really just serves to highlight the need to make sure that those are secured and protected because it's becoming just a normal part of life, right? You don't need to just worry about phishing emails or things when you're at work with your work account. You need to worry about it on your phone, on your watch, on, on all of your personal emails, everything. It's gone, it's now become something that's a pervasive part of our lives. So we need to have that, that mental shift to thinking about cybersecurity as just something you do as a course of your normal day-to-day -day life. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, now, Pru, um, you are currently studying computer science. And um, I just wanted to ask, um, can you tell us about your choice to study computer science and how do you plan to use computer science to build the future? Yeah, so as I previously mentioned, I have always taken keen interest in computer science and I even took numerous computer science courses in high school that were taught in different languages like C++, Python, and Java. And through these experiences, I learned that I absolutely love computer science and that I want to continue it as my major because it gives me both a challenge and the ability to problem solve and sometimes even as a group. 
Like for example, in high school, I was able to work with my friends um, through a program that could like go through loops and sort lists or even other ones that were more fun, like drawing diagrams. And I absolutely just loved it. So now I'm doing it here in college. And then also computer science, it's very broad. So it can be applied in many different ways. Like in the future, I might want to continue using computer science in my master's degree, or I wanna become a computer science educator, where, whether that be through like a regular school system or through an outside nonprofit company to help increase the number of girls in the STEM field, or even might want to work at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. But however, I plan to use computer science in the future. I know that I want to do it in a way that will benefit the world for girls who want to pursue computer science, cybersecurity, or really anything in the STEM field, because I find that very important. That's wonderful. Um, so thank you so much uh, to our special guests for being with us. Um, for sharing their amazing stories, for sharing their um, knowledge. You are an inspiration. Um, so I think now it's uh, for all of you uh, to ask questions um, to all our wonderful uh, guests who are ready to answer your questions. Um, and while we give our team a minute to compile um, the questions, we have a, a set of special guests to inspire the rest of our conversation. Next, you will hear from the Director of Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, Jen Easterly. Director Easterly is the first woman to lead the federal agency that builds the national capacity to defend against cyber attacks. She has extensive experience working in cybersecurity in government, and in private sector. Her long tradition of public service includes two tours at the White House, most recently as the special assistant to President Obama and senior director for counterterrorism, and earlier as executive assistant to national security advisor Condoleezza Rice in the George W. Bush administration. She is a two-time recipient of the Bronzer Star stood up the Army's first cyber battalion and was instrumental in the design and creation of the United States Cyber Command. Hey everybody, my name is Jen Easterly. I'm the director of the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, also known as CISA. And I'm really thrilled to talk with you today. Now maybe you're sitting around your screen this evening after dinner, maybe you've got homework, Maybe you've just been talking about what's going on in the world with your family and friends. And if so, then you already know how quickly the world is changing due to all of our new technology and how different the world has become from when your parents were young or when I was young. In some ways, different from when your older brothers and sisters were young. And you can imagine how different it will be in the future. You will play a major part in creating that world. Things are changing really quickly. And at CISA, I'm incredibly happy to talk with you today. You, the Girl Scouts who've already begun to develop the skills you need to help all of us to work together with others, to come up with better ideas, things nobody has thought of before, and think about how we can be even better and stronger and how you can help make that happen. In many ways, that's what we do at CISA every day. Maybe you wanna work here, it's possible. Today, you've heard the stories of remarkable women who started out just like you, thinking about the world and all of the amazing things in it, dreaming of all of the things they might do, and then continue to dream and to work really hard to each have a fantastic career in cyber. You heard from Secretary Mayorkas, who said that you are the future of cybersecurity, and it's true. I'd like to tell you a little bit about how I came to this job as the director of CISA. I'm sure you've heard that the longest journey begins with the first step, and that's true. But you know, it's also important to figure out what kind of journey you wanna take. Now, if most of the ideas of the future have not been thought of yet, how can you know what to do? Well, let me tell you how it worked for me. When I was a little girl, I loved puzzles. I loved thinking about uh, how things work and how to solve things. 
So what about you? What are you interested in? In this case, I really love the Rubik's Cube. Uh, I used to go around to stores in the area and bet the store owners that I could solve the Rubik's Cube in less than two minutes, and then uh, and they would give me a free one. So I got a lot of cubes. You know, and if you're watching, uh, I bet you are full of all sorts of creative ideas, and you've probably thought of a few things that you want to do. Now, I went from solving puzzles to solving problems in school, then in the army, and after that, working in cybersecurity for a big bank, and then doing a bunch of other things. And I was asked to come back and help the government, so here I am as the director of CISA. So think about this. Here we are on Zoom, which was invented in your lifetime. You probably remember when it came around. But you're not older than the internet. Now, when I was your age, the internet didn't even exist. The computers we have today, they didn't exist either. Smartphones, nope, they didn't exist. Can you imagine that? There was no way I could plan to work in cybersecurity when I was young because, frankly, no one was really thinking about that. You see where I'm going? Imagine what will be invented in the future and what you may even help to invent yourself if you pursue those talents now. It's so exciting to talk to you today because you've already started doing this. Perhaps some of you will join us at CISA soon. I really hope you do to work with us to help make the world safer for your family, your friends, and for our nation. Some of you may work in other areas of cybersecurity. That means we might meet someday uh, somewhere else because CISA partners with everybody. And we work with some really awesome people. So thank you for watching today and for being an inspiration to all of us. I want to thank our partners at cyber.org, our panelists from Palo Alto and Southwest Airlines, and especially the Girl Scouts for partnering with us and putting us in touch uh, with all of you, which is the most important thing. Also, congratulations to the Girl Scouts that completed the Cyber Challenge. You'll all get a certificate to commemorate your great efforts, but no Rubik's Cubes. You're going to have to come here to get one of those, and I know you will. Thank you. I hope to see you soon. Next, you will hear from Sh Senator Shelley Moore Capito of West Virginia and Congresswoman Yvette Clark from New York. Thanks so much for your time, and keep up the great work. That was a great video from Director Easterly. And as she mentioned, we're honored to have special messages from Senator Shelley Moore Capito and Representative Yvette Clark. Both are members of Girl Scouts Troops Capitol Hill and are great champions for girls across the country. Hi everyone, this is Senator Shelley Moore Capito from the great state of West Virginia. I'd like to first thank the Department of Homeland Security and the Girl Scouts for helping put on today's event. Cybersecurity has never been more important to the safety of Americans and the overall security of our country. Just this month, I introduced legislation to establish a new Cybersecurity Policy Development Office. I also helped to launch an Institute for Cybersecurity at one of our major universities in West Virginia. These efforts underscore the growing opportunity available within our cybersecurity sector. It also underscores the need for smart, hardworking girls like yourself to someday step into these roles. As you move forward throughout your educational journey, I encourage you to act with confidence. The opportunities will be there for you. As the first female U.S. Senator from the state of West Virginia, making sure girls have the chance to advance in STEM and cybersecurity fields is very important to me. And I am confident that the young women here today will go on to change the future for the better and play a major role in the success of our nation. I'm so excited to see what the future holds for all of you. No matter what the next step of your journey is, please let me know if there is any way I can be of assistance. Hello, Scouts. I'm Congresswoman Yvette D. Clark from Brooklyn, New York and I am honored to be joining you all virtually today through cyberspace. Here in Washington, D.C., I am the chairwoman of the House of Representatives Committee on Homeland Security Cybersecurity Subcommittee. Whew, that's a lot. Which means I work to ensure that our nation's cyber infrastructure is secure and protected from bad actors. 
As cyber attacks increase, we will need more people that are willing to work in this critical yet exciting field. And that starts with young people like you. Girl Scouts have the opportunity to be a part of the next generation of cybersecurity talent. Not all Shiro's wear capes. Some of them fight to ensure that people and their personal data and experiences on the internet is safe and protected. In fact, in my district, Scout Pru received a gold award for starting a cybersecurity awareness group in her hometown and is now studying computer science in college. As Beyonce said, who runs the world? Girls, and I agree. Now go out there and show the world what you can accomplish. So we have a couple of questions. Um, one question I have for Princess, uh, could you please um, explain to us what are some of the common misconceptions about cybersecurity? Of course, and unfortunately there are probably many, but a few that I'll specifically talk to today is first off, and I kind of mentioned this during the panel discussion earlier, is that you have to be a computer science major or a cybersecurity major or be, uh, have to, you, that you have to have a technology background in order to be successful in this field. And I have to say that maybe years ago that might have been the case, but now as we continue to evolve the career field, we're really seeing that we need talent of all kinds, just like in the law field. We need people that have a law background to come into cybersecurity and talk about legislation that might be needed in order to prosecute our, our threat actors, whether they're here in the US or they're across the world. We need people with public speaking backgrounds and those who like to talk and create and entertain because sometimes we need to we need to convey really complex topics and make it easy for folks to understand whether it's the CEO of a business or the secretary of a company. We have to be able to leverage all these great talents in cyber to get the work done. Just, just like how cyber is a diverse area, we need our people to be diverse as well. The other misconception I just say is we think sometimes that all the businesses and all the apps that we use are keeping us safe. And unfortunately, that might not be the case all the time. And some businesses might even leverage some of our data in order to further their business. So cybersecurity really is a shared responsibility. And you really have to find ways, as Jen was saying earlier, to keep yourself safe at home and at work and really jump in there and find ways to learn more about cyber and protect your devices and your data because not one organization not one government, not one community can do it all by themselves. We need everybody to play a part. Thank you so much. Um, the next question is for you, Jen. What kind of skills or education are needed to work in cybersecurity? Are there certain programming languages the, that girls should learn? That is a perfect follow on from what Princess was just saying, because to, to further highlight that and Director Easterly as well, um, really diverse backgrounds are the key to doing this successfully. We need people who are fluent in foreign languages. We need people who understand international politics and the different cultural influences and backgrounds that can inform why certain things might be happening. You know, we need people who are able to reverse engineer malware. We need people who are able to go through PCAPs. We need people who are able to effectively translate and communicate all of that information at all different levels. So it'll, you can translate it to other super technical people, but you can also communicate it to your neighbor. You can also communicate it to your family. 
You can also communicate it to the C-suite. And that takes a lot of different skill types. It's not that typical, oh, I have to love math and sciences kind of thing. There's a lot of the, the quote unquote soft skills that are increasingly being recognized as being critical to a lot of cybersecurity roles because so much of this I mean, it's great if you have that data and some of the technical know-how, but if you can't communicate to other people in a way that makes that understandable, it's kind of useless, right? It's not going to be used for protections. It's not going to be used to inform anyone to make better decisions. That's a critical component of all of this. One of my, one of my best friends for a long time, she had a job doing this and she called it nerd whispering. She's like, I talked to them. And then I can communicate it back to other people in a way that makes sense to them. And that's a really important skill. So even if you aren't into a lot of tech components, maybe you like languages. Honestly, the biggest thing I've noticed most of us in this field love is puzzles. Almost all of us in some way, shape or form, when you ask us about things we like, we like puzzles and we like solving things. So if you have that kind of mindset where you like to figure things out and you're not necessarily going to get frustrated really quickly, then it's totally likely that you will have a job or you could have a job somewhere within cybersecurity. And just like Director Easterly said, this field changes so fast. When I first got into this, this didn't exist. I thought this was gonna be a fun six month break from my day job. Like it wasn't a thing. And here I am almost 20 years later and I have an entire career out of it and I love it. And in the time that I've been doing this, I've seen so many jobs and fields just come out of nowhere, right? Cloud is one thing. Cloud wasn't a thing. No one thought about that. No one even imagined it. And now it's one of the fastest growing components of cybersecurity. So really, if this is something that interests you, don't feel limited by what you see out there currently. It's going to continue to grow and evolve. And whatever you want to do, it's you will undoubtedly be successful at it doing this. Thank you. Um, the next question is for Prue. Um, Prue, what is um, what was it like to earn your gold award? What was the best and the most challenging parts of your project? So earning my gold award was one of the most exciting experiences that I've ever had. It was the largest project that I'd ever run myself and it was about a topic that I was truly passionate into, which is bringing more girls into the STEM field. So overall, it was super fun and it was just a riveting experience. And I would definitely encourage all of you girls out there who are watching to continue Girl Scouts and pursue your gold award. And then for the most challenging part for me of my gold award was probably when I was rounding up a group of girls at my high school to create the club to begin with and just to create the team of mentorships. And this was hard just because there aren't always a lot of girls in this field. However, once I was able to attain a whole bunch of members and mentors who were very excited, I was able to get my Gold Award truly started. And I was able to experience the best part of my project, which was being able to work with a whole bunch of girls who were just as excited as I was in cybersecurity. And I loved, meeting new people who held similar interests and just the community of supportive girls that we were able to build. So that was definitely the best part. Great. Um, so thank you so much um, for the great questions and you answered those beautifully. Uh, I would like to ask each and every one of you now to make the final remarks uh, to the audience and any advice that you have for them. Anyone can start. I'll go quick and keep it short, but thank you all so much to all of you that are interested in cybersecurity. It just makes me so happy and thrilled for the next generation that there are people already interested and invested in cybersecurity. So go online, look more into cybersecurity, find programs in your community that you can go to, and also look for mentors in your community or through social media, through LinkedIn. Uh, talk to your parents and, and your family members and find ways to start learning more about the field. And we will see you in cyber one day. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'll be super quick. Honestly, everything Prince has said, and if you find me on LinkedIn or Twitter and you want some advice, or you have questions, feel free to reach out. 
Um, if you're interested in the current field, go for it. If you see a need and a gap where no one's doing it, absolutely pursue it. You are most, you are entirely likely 100% right that that is an absolute need that we have. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I'm so humbled to be here. I'm so happy there's so many other, other young women interested in the field and, and coming up. So my final message to anyone who's interested in computer science or cybersecurity is to just be bold and be open-minded. And just remember that us girls are just as smart as capable and that we should never let any stereotypes steer us away. And as girls in STEM, we are able to provide so many new ideas and perspective, which I cannot emphasize how important that is in this field. So believe in yourself and take on anything and everything that comes when entering this field of computer science or cybersecurity. Thank you so much. Um, tonight is really a night of celebration and I am so grateful uh, to each and every one of you for your successes, for taking the time tonight to tell your extraordinary story and inspired all of us. And for the audience, remember that tonight um, at the heart of it all, it's a celebration. So I encourage you to, uh, to learn more, to stay involved and um, to remain committed and energized about the digital future. The stories of our amazing guests tonight are really inspiring. And I hope you take this message um, and really as a Girl Scout, really embrace the field of cybersecurity. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And again, thank you so very much to our fantastic guests. Very, very grateful. Thank you so much, Ava, and to our incredible panelists. I hope you all had so much fun this evening. I know I really enjoyed that conversation and that discussion. Now, let's take a moment to think about everything we've heard tonight. Whether you've learned something new and are inspired for your own future, there's so many ways we can use cybersecurity to make the world a safer place um, for, all, for ourselves and for others. Before we end for the night, let's do one final poll to see what part of, part of cyber you all are most excited about. We're gonna put that question up on the screen in a minute and we'll give you a, a moment to choose amongst the four different options. Awesome. It looks like most of you chose that you want to build awareness and teach others to be cyber safe. That is so exciting, but all of these are wonderful ways to keep um, things to keep in mind for how you can make a difference one day with cybersecurity. Now to speak about how all of you can make a difference again, with cybersecurity in some other ways, let's hear from interim CEO of Girl Scouts of the USA, Ms. Judith Batty. Hello, I'm Judith Batty, Interim CEO of Girl Scouts of the USA. Now that you've heard from leaders across the field of cybersecurity, we hope that you are excited to continue learning about how cybersecurity education can unlock opportunities for you and help you and your community stay safe from cyber criminals. If you're a Girl Scout, you can try one of the three cybersecurity badges for each grade level or the Think Like a Programmer journey. And if you're not a Girl Scout yet, I invite you to join us. All girls are welcome. And you can start at any age between five and 18 years old. As a Girl Scout, you are part of a sisterhood of girls in your community, working to make your community and the world a better place. 
Visit us at girlscouts.org and find out more about all the amazing things you can do if you join us. Thank you all for attending this exciting event. I would like to especially thank Secretary Mayorkas for inviting Girl Scouts to partner with the Department of Homeland Security on the Cyber Awareness Challenge. And thank you to Senator Capito and Congresswoman Clark for your participation today. And I would also like to thank Assistant Secretary Ava Malona, CISA Director Jen Easterly, and our host, Rena Patel, and the Office of Partnerships and Engagements at the Department of Homeland Security. We are very grateful for our wonderful panelists, Jen Miller Osborne with Palo Alto Networks, Princess Young with Southwest Airlines, and Pru Young Trarak. And finally, thank you to cyber.org, the Department of Homeland Security, and the Security Infrastructure and Security Agency for your partnership and support of this wonderful event. Thanks so much, Ms. Batty. If you're a Girl Scout and want to continue your journey to learn more about cyber, you can earn up to three different cybersecurity badges for your level. So it doesn't matter if you're a cadet, junior, senior, brownie, there's badges for you to earn. Ask your troop leader or council for more information on these badges. You can also find the badge booklet in the Girl Scout shop. And I think I still might have one of mine. If you're not a Girl Scout, you can continue the fun by signing up at girlscouts.org. If you're a Girl Scout but haven't registered yet for this year, don't, don't delay, you can still renew your membership. Girl Scouts and non-Girl Scouts can also keep the fun going by completing the cyber cybersecurity activity for your grade level on Girl Scouts at home at, at girlscouts.org slash at home. Then you can check out all the other fun activities you can do from entrepreneurship to STEM to things outside. It's a fun time. And of course, please check out the resources that DHS, CISA, and cyber.org have. There's some right here on your screen, and there's plenty um, to check out if you're interested in staying involved in cybersecurity. And stay tuned for the event survey. It will pop up on your screen as soon as this event ends. Um, and we encourage you all to take it. Thank you all so much for joining us today. We hope our time together has inspired you to consider a future in cybersecurity. And remember to keep yourself, your data, and devices safe anytime you're online. Thank you again, and goodbye.